Hey guys, um, <laughs> six and I collector doing a late night video before I go to bed. This one is a piece that's gonna be going out, so I said let me just shoot a video before I send it off because it, it's pretty much completed. You know, I got it to a point where I like it, but I'm probably not gonna be making another one of these anytime soon. So this is uh kind of like a post apocalyptic Punisher. That's kind of what I was thinking of when I did it, you know, kind of just totally, I don't look at him. He's got like no flesh showing. So yeah, you can assume like this is post-apocalyptic or maybe like out in the desert Punisher. This is pretty much a kit bash, real simple one, but a bunch of different parts We're looking at him right now. It's a four different figures. So I'm going to go over it real quick. You can tell immediately, like, this is the Nightmare Batman body. Like, a lot of people were riding that figure. Like, oh my god, it's the best figure ever! One of Mesco's best, I love it! Nah, I didn't really, you know, it was okay. It was okay. <laughs> um, this coat was pretty cool. Um, some parts of it were nice, but, I mean, it wasn't balls. So, I didn't really have any qualms about chopping it up. So, uh, one thing you notice is the vest, of course. This is from a knockoff Punisher. Um, one of the main difference is, is this is a little bit smaller. The bodies from the knockoffs are more narrow. The neck is narrow. The heads are smaller and more narrow. Pegs are different sizes. But um, it fit on there. And I was able to squeeze it and get it shut. So, it fits just fine once it's on there. But I did notice that the pegs are actually flesh tone, which I thought was stupid. <laughs> you get flesh tone pegs. That paint her black. So, whatever. But, um... Oh. Okay. So his belt's coming undone. But, whatever. I'm sure I can just snap that back shot. Um, the Nightmare Batman did have this cool feature, though. It had this strap that came around and it held the harness in with the leg. Which I think is really nice because it prevents it from sliding up and down. Plus, it kind of looks cool. You know, you had your Sonin cargo pants, your knee pads. I thought all that was really awesome. All right, the boots, you can tell her from Commander Rogers. I don't know why. It's really weird, but this one, you can hear it. It's kind of tight. This one's not really loose, but not as tight. I don't know what it is about the peg, so I just had to hit it with a little bit of threads to make it a little bit thicker just to kind of keep it, give it some girth on that peg. But still stands just fine. No problem with the posability. Gauntlets. Now the gauntlets. I initially took off the Batman gauntlets. This coat was like glued on the forearm. And I pulled it off thinking to go without it. But uh, there were just so many things. So many obstacles. I said you know what screw it. I'm going to leave it on here. And I replaced it with gauntlets from the PX Punisher. Right, and the reason I went with PX Punisher was because I had one I was parting out, so I said screw it. And because the gray was much easier to paint black. And I don't have to worry about it bleeding through so much like I would if I would have used the red hands from regular Deadpool. Why am I saying PX Punisher? These are Deadpool gauntlets. I'm sorry, folks. These are from uh, PX Deadpool. Not nah, PX Punisher. He didn't even have gauntlets. He's one of the few figures with full forearms. So forgive me. But uh, he's got his hands here. I don't really know why you need this one. It's not really like a I guess like silent call me. But um yeah, all the hands were painted black. Actually a little wrist peg there. But that's that. So moving up, we're gonna go to this head, Spec Ops Punisher. The neck. Uh I took off the old scarf and put and I just kinda like cut a triangle out of some fabric and stitched it in the back because I felt like if you had a regular head on there. You could pull it up over the face and make kind of like a mask. Now for the cowl, I didn't have a neck and I didn't want to fight to get a neck peg or buy one separately. So the neck cowl piece, I popped off pretty easily. It's not glued on there like a sending knight. So it came off and it just came back on. I put it over top of the vest, which was a pretty good fit. And then once you put the head back on, the head kind of fits on the peg with no problem. But what it is, is it's the girth of the cowl. So you still get that range of motion that you would have gotten with Batman. You know? And it stays on there just fine. But because of this, it can fall off easily. Once you uh, 
turn it too much, like go that way, and this way you pop off. So you just have to make sure you give it a good press once you position it. But I still think it looks really good. And uh surprised. I didn't sand it or anything, so I was just surprised how it just kind of fit in there and worked. And again, I think it looks really nice because for this figure, it's like completely covered up. It's just like, you know, you think stuff went down, things are bad, Punisher grabbed what he could. Um, another thing, I really like how the vest fit right into these pouches. When I first did it, I put it on there. It just slid in between the pouches here in the front, and it looked so perfect. So I fell in love with that. Uh, the coat, kind of glad I kept it. The person I'm sending this to doesn't want the coat. But this is a really, really nice coat. <laughs> How many times can you say coat? The one thing about it was just because it was tucked in those Batman gauntlets, they had cut it short. Mm. You know. So, taking it off, um, just kind of left it unable to be used really on any other figure. I'm sitting here with the long pause. I need to go to sleep. <laughs> But when I decided to go with the Deadpool hands, just because they had gun-holding hands, I said, let me put this back on there. I didn't stitch it up or sew it back in or anything. I just put it back on there. And a good thing, because the person doesn't want it, so I'm just going to keep it. Maybe use it again in the future. Um, I'm trying to think if I need anything, anything else I kind of really want to point out. Not really, other than the fact that I did weather the coat. You'll see these lighter sections. What that is, is that's actually the coat. Being damaged. I wanted to get a weathered look, and trust me, you know, it was a pain. I had a Marvel Legends coat, which was really, really tight on here, really restricted the movement. Um, the Old Man Logan coat was nice, but it's just so flat to weather it, it's pretty much impossible. The coat's like indestructible. I would have to tie it around a rock and roll it down a hill a million times to get this kind of weathering. This was, I just kind of hit it with sandpaper. And the material, just see that? This material is not as, uh, it doesn't stand up as well as, um, Old Man Logan's, which is fine because this is kind of what I wanted. I wanted it to have that look like it's been beat up, you know? So this was, you can see, I'm just hitting it with my thumbnail and I can add weathering to it, which is really, really nice. I like that. The old man Logan, I did put some holes in there, so you could just poke some holes there, give it bullet holes, but that was really cool. And then, of course, there's the fact that there's a thin wire going through here. So, oh no, not a bad, you know, not a bad job. I like what I did, but I am parting ways with it. Not sad, maybe I'll make another one one day, but, uh, you know, got other projects I'm going to work on downsizing the collection and whatnot but i think that's pretty much it what is this at eight minutes it's long enough just showing off a little kit bash i hope you guys liked it um one thing though about this figure is like i'm just kind of disillusioned by it because you get it and the pistol looks nice but this is probably one of mesco's only pistols where it's got no action not even the magazine comes out yeah, it's got the wood handle, so it's still pretty nice looking, I suppose, but mm, I was like, damn, not so much underwhelmed. It's, you know, still got really nice detail on it. What really just didn't throw me is, again, I don't know, I made this video and I put it up. I don't know if I actually put it on YouTube or not, but while I was filming it, <laughs> trying to get him to hold this gun... As I was trying to put it in his hand, he rubbed the bottom of the bandana right off. I was like, get the F out of here. I was not happy with that. Not thrilled at all. So, yeah. But I kind of like what I did here. Nightmare Batman, not so much. Sold the head, sold the gauntlets, still got the boots. But uh, what it was, was it's just a fantastic base body. If Mezco ever decided to just release plain figures, you know, just things that weren't licensed... Like, give me ninjas, give me mercenaries, you know, stuff like this, which no Batman on there, or whatever. Oh my god, they'd make a killing. I mean, they'd probably be a little cheap, or, or for that 80 bucks, you can add more accessories. But I would go ham bananas, and people would love it. That's one thing you don't really get, whether it's Marvel Legends, Mezco, whatever. You know, you don't really get a lot of goons or stooges or just things to army build unless. 
It's like Hydra soldiers. You can in the one six scale because people make so much stuff, but um, it's just a little harder here. But that's that's the thing about you know Mezco. You you see it now. People are chopping up Mezcos and parting them out here and there, so the market's kind of growing for the accessories. You need. I might do that with this coat. Who knows? Coats weathered. I might just throw it online and see if somebody wants to buy it for one of their own customs. But again, guys, thank you for checking me out. If you like the video, hit like. Please subscribe. Keep checking back or hit the notification bell so you know when I throw up something new. Any questions, just let me know. All right. Later.